When you're talking about neck pain, you have to talk about the sternocleidomastoids, the SCM. So what is the SCM? So I'm gonna concentrate on my right SCM. So the right SCM is right there. So if you side bend your head to the right and rotate your neck, your head to the left, that is being done by the SCM. It's a really big muscle. It's long, strong, and it can really impact not only your neck, but really your whole body. So let's take a little look at it. So this SCM attaches to the base of your head at the temporal bone. Temporal being part of the TMJ, that's how most people know of the temporal bone, if they know of the temporal bone at all. TMJ, temporal mandibular joint. So it has a huge effect on the movements of your jaw because it, it attaches, it's a very big attachment to the base of the skull at the base of the temporal bone. It also attaches to the front of your chest. So here's a rib cage. It attaches to the sternum and to the clavicle. So basically the front of your chest. So what does it do? Besides side bend and rotate, this is where it gets interesting. When it's tight, it can pull the chest up because it acts as, a, as an accessory muscle of respiration. So when we're not engaging our diaphragms properly, particularly on the left side, the SCM will try to help and pull our chest up, which then, if this is the front of the chest, pulls the chest up and now it increases the curve in our lower back. And now we have problems. The other thing it can do is with the temporal bone, if it's overactive for too long, it's gonna exert a really strong pull on this temporal bone. And it pulls the temporal bone, what we call internally, so in and back. And a lot of times, that's why you see people with a right side of the head that's a little bit more compact than the left side. If you're trained, if you have a trained eye to see this type of thing, you'll see left sides of the face are a little bit more full rounder than, than the right side, because the right side is being compressed a little bit because of that temporal bone. So how does this right SCM become overactive? Well, it happens because when we get stuck in right stance, our weight shifts to the right, our pelvis orients to the right, our torso out orients to the right, our upper body has to then counter rotate to the left to stay straight. So I have this twist going on, including my head. Otherwise, I'd be facing this way. And what accomplishes that? The right SCM is the major player in this movement. So because my neck is oriented to the right, and then I have to bring my head back to the left, that positions the right SCM to be overactive. And now once it's overactive, it's gonna start to try to help breathe, and it starts to pull the chest up thereby making things even worse. So we can now, instead of just being a single left AIC, right BC, right TMCC pattern person, we now may end up forward on both sides, chest up on both sides, and then neck forward on both sides. So what happens? The neck comes forward, so chest comes up, neck comes forward, the neck straightens, and it loses its 30 degrees of lordosis. The neck should have, if this is the front of the neck, it should have this natural curve, which unfortunately this model doesn't really have, but it should have a natural curve to it, 30 degrees of lordosis, just like in the lower body. So if the neck comes forward on both sides so that our head and neck both flex forward, now both SCMs are gonna be overactive. And that's, now you have two SCMs pulling the chest up, pulling the neck forward, and you've lost your diaphragms. You're losing the ground underneath you. Your feet can't pronate. Your pelvis is stuck rotated forward. And you don't have very good movement because you're rigid. You've lost the ability just to uh, laterally flex your spine when you lose lateral flexion of the spine or thoracic abduction of the spine, however you want to call it, side bending of the spine, you lose the ability to rotate your spine. These people are really, really stiff. I was one of them. 
So I know from experience. So you might not only have an overactive right SCM, now because you had to balance out your asymmetry by coming forward on both sides, now you have an overactive left SCM also because it's trying to balance a head on a neck that's forward. So that forward head posture, it's probably really a forward neck posture and your head just goes for the ride. Now what's the biggest problem here is that your head goes like this. It is extending on your neck. So, the, so your occiput, which is the base of the skull. So here is the base of the skull. Here is the front of the neck. Neck comes forward. Occiput extends. And this is to maintain a straight line of vision. When you lose movement at the occiput and atlas joint, OA joint, structures blood vessels, nerves can be impinged, very important ones. And these are, remember, these are the nerves that operate your autonomic nervous system. This is the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, heart rate, breathing, movement, vagus, hearing, tasting, trigeminal, facial. So a lot of different things can get messed up in this area. And you become what may be known as an autonomic nightmare like I was with my ringing ears and just overall pain. So the question becomes, how do you turn off an overactive right SCM? Well, if you are in a right stance position, so left AIC, right BC, right TMCC pattern, and your weight is over to the right side, your pelvis is oriented to the right, your spine is oriented to the right, your your neck is oriented to the right. Everything's oriented to the right. In order to stay straight, which is this way, my upper body has to rotate back to the left and my head has to rotate back to the left. That positions the right SCM into that, tight, into that overactive position, not necessarily tight. So to turn that off, as long as there's no dental issues and no visual issues, all we would really have to do is get into left stance, which means we have to reposition the pelvis to bring our weight to the left. We have to be able to get thoracic abduction on the left, which means exhalation, which establishes that left ZOA. At that point, when our head is straight, because our body is oriented to the left, that will put the left SCM into a position to turn on, and it will. And so we have left stance. We got our left ZOA. Left SCM kicks in because our torso is to the left and our head is straight ahead. That turns off the right SCM. And now you just have to make sure you can maintain that going right to left. And really, that's what all PRI exercises do. It gets you to use your left side properly. And then you learn through alternating activity to go from one side to the other and not getting stuck over on the right side, which would turn the right SCM back on again. And that is how you really just turn off a right SCM. It's just by getting left stance, left AFIR, left ZOA.